As always, please remember to press the like button if you like this video on my channel. And if you wish to subscribe, please press the subscribe button and then you will see other videos from me automatically. Hi and welcome to the channel Newtown Naughty Boy. In this video I'll be looking at the Crossman Mark II air pistol. If you remember from a previous video where I showed you and I compared the Crossman Mark I with the Mark II and showed you the differences I actually said during that video that uh, I would follow that video up with another video where I take the air pistol apart and replace the seals inside. Well it's been remiss of me because uh, other things have seemed to have taken over and I haven't had a chance until now to actually do the video for you and actually take this air pistol apart so that's what I intend to do today and I may split this video up into two parts because it may be quite a lengthy process but I want to go through with you the procedure also of how you go about taking something like this apart which would apply to anything any type of air pistol or air rifle when you're going to do work on an air rifle or air pistol it's important that before you start that work that you understand exactly what you're going to be doing and the only way that you can do that is to do some research to start with and to find out exactly how the air gun is put together and how you might take it apart now for this particular gun that we're talking about today the Crossman Mark II, the 177 version. Um, there is quite a lot of information available to you on the internet. So I have here a breakdown diagram of the gun um, and it labels all the parts and everything. So that's, that's ideal. If you can get hold of something like this, that's going to aid you with taking the air gun apart. Uh, and you might have noticed that I've highlighted certain bits on this gun. These are the bits that I'm going to be taken, taking out of the gun. And I've also numbered these because what I also have is, and I'll show you that, and I found this on the internet as well, is a, a basic uh, pistol disassembly um, set of bullet points, if you like. So this starts at the top here with remove grip screws uh, grip panels and and piercing assembly so this is going to be used as we actually take the air pistol apart and I can correlate um, back the uh, whatever we're part we're going to be taking apart with whatever number on the actual breakdown diagram so of course before you even start to take your uh, air pistol apart um, it's very wise to uh, make sure that you can get hold of the parts before you start so I've already ordered up the o-rings that I need to replace on the air pistol so there's two sets here I think one sets for the uh, mark one and ones for the mark two um, so I have both sets there and um, I obtain those o-rings from um, the United States they came from a chap called Rifle Ron on eBay um, and he sends out those e-rings with o-rings with um, an ex explanation as to uh, which of the rings fit which part of the gun so that's really great because that then ties up with our breakdown diagram or a, a exploded view diagram of the air pistol that will enable us to uh, match up uh, the o-rings to the part we need to replace so that's that's really useful so and on the back of that um, um, rifle runs also sent me uh, the exploded diagram as well so that's what you would get um, as part of your package that's that's a really good um, that's that was a really good buy so 
Before we start, I also wanted to explain what I do uh, when I'm taking anything apart. Um, because I may be um, taking the gun apart and putting it back together on different days um, from for, for whatever reason, um, I tend to place each part that I take off the gun and stick it with some tape onto a wooden board with a number on. So this, these numbers will correlate back to um, my piece of paper with the uh, the list of instructions that we're we're going to follow. So by doing this and mounting on the board with a piece of sticky tape each each of the parts that we take off. Um, I'm able then to understand the order that we need to put everything back together again and Placing it on a board like this. I can then put this out the way somewhere if I need to work on something else but I really would recommend using the board or a something like a board or something that has containers that you can label up um, to actually keep your parts uh, in, in an order so that you understand when you need to put it all back together again what bit goes with what. That's quite important. Okay so here I am ready to dismantle the gun using the instructions I've got and my uh, parts uh, exploded parts diagram. So the first thing on the list is to remove the um, the actual plastic handles, the grips here. Now um, I'm going to re take these off, um, but in actual fact, um, for the sakes of what we're doing here and actually replacing the seals on this gun, the actual plastic moulded grips here don't actually need to come off, but I always take these off um, just so that uh, we don't have any accidents and I don't actually crack these plastic grips because uh, they are obviously almost irreplaceable um, so it's wise to always take off these uh, more fragile parts of the gun so that's number one on the list so I will be taking these four screws that I've taken off and the plastic handles and taping these to the board. The pistol grips off which was number one here. Um, I'm going to take out the uh, pistol assem uh, the actual uh, piercing assembly now so that's number one as well. So that's just a matter of unscrewing the piercing assembly out of the handle of the gun. So this is our first o-ring that we're going to have to replace here. So if we actually zoom down, zoom down on this a little bit more you should be able to see here that there's an o-ring around the top half here and this ensures that when you screw this plug back into the gun that no gas escapes so this is the first part that we need to replace. Okay, so I've got my new ring here ready for this plug. So it's just a simple matter of prising the old one off and I've got a little pick here. That, but you can use a small screwdriver or something that will just get underneath the rubber ring. It doesn't really matter if it breaks because it's got to come off anyway. This one has. It's um, it's perished it's actually quite brittle so that needed to come off anyway that's probably been on there quite a long time um, and it's just a matter then of just putting the new one back on and that's slipped on really really easily now I will put on some uh, some silicon oil around that in a minute just to make sure that that's lubricated up there and uh, and fits in snugly when it's screwed back in so on my instruction list I'm jumping now from number one to number eight where it says old marks have a bolt guide screw that are removed next and this is 1064 on our 
diagram and it's actually this screw here and there's one the other side as well so you may not have this screw on your particular gun this is uh, the variant that does have this screw so we'll next take this screw out on this side it's quite a short screw and flip the gun over onto the other side and unscrew the other screw so with those both out I'm going to place these two screws here that I've just taken out on my board on number eight so that I know where those came from okay so I've found that I've had to backtrack a little bit here um, and we do need to undo some screws that uh, will allow us to actually pull back uh, out of the gun the actual loading bolt here so um, there are two screws on the actual site itself so the bigger one at the front of the site comes off first and that will allow you to actually take the actual blade off itself so that's the actual blade that has fallen out there there's a secondary screw right at the back here so if we take that out this is your lateral adjustment for the site so that needs to come out as well And it's got a little washer on the top of it so make sure you don't lose that those two things have to go together so um, when you're putting it in a safe place make sure you label those two things up together now in a secondary hole in between the two holes that we we've, we've just removed a screw from there's a grub screw and you need to take that out too that has underneath it a spring and a ball bearing and that fits into a detent in the loading or the cocking arm so that needs to come out too and the, the grub the grub screw is extremely small make sure you don't lose that and turn the best way i found is to turn the gun upside down and give it a tap and the ball bearing and the spring should fall out so those three things need to go together as well so when you put this back in the ball bearing goes in first into that middle hole then the spring and then the grub screw on top of that so right i'll put those away now on my board so we can then carry on with the dis dismantling okay so with all of those screws removed um this should pull out of the back the actual loading bolt should pull out the back now i found this incredibly stiff to start with and i actually wondered whether there was another screw in here holding all of this in and i really had to give it quite a pull to pull the whole back assembly out so here we have the um the retaining collar here and the, the bolt assembly itself so uh on the end of the actual probe here there's an o-ring that we need to replace so we'll do that one now so using my tool my little pick I'm going to dig under this o-ring and prise it off the probe itself again a little bit fiddly and I may of course damage this getting it off but it doesn't matter because I've got my spare parts here uh, so it's just a little bit difficult to get this one off it's not particularly perished I don't think but um, so that's so that's the old one off and the new one there we'll give that just a squirt of silicon oil that before we attempt to put the new one back on so I'm hoping this is going to just slide on quite easily 
once we get it yes that's gone over okay so that's fine that's that's that part now complete with the o-ring and we can now carry on with the disassembly to replace the o-rings inside the gun so the next job is to re take out the, um, the the screw or uh, the uh, barrel nut remove the barrel nut it says at the muzzle so I don't know if you can see down there that there is a nut right down there on the edge here and it's got two notches either side the only real tool that you might have that is going to get that nut out are a pair of long nose pliers so by inserting the pliers into the end of the gun um, hopefully that will grip the sides of this nut and enable you yes that's that's now turning now now so I'm trying to show you how that might happen. Oh, now I've loosened it, the, the nut is unscrewing, so that's fine. You can probably see that a little bit better now. So that nut should just fall out, I would think, once it's unscrewed. I'll use my fingers just to finish it off there. So that's, that's the part from the barrel so that's out now so with the removal of the barrel nut um, from the muzzle end of the barrel the next instruction says that uh, slide the barrel housing out of the frame now I'm going to do this in front of you uh, with the camera on and this isn't complicated it's just a matter of pulling pulling the housing out but be aware that there's quite a lot going on and you should really take note of what's happening here there's there's a kind of a part that's fallen off there so you have to be aware of that let's put the gun down and let me show you the housing here now on this particular variant um, we have the um, ability here to adjust the power um, you may not have that one on your gun so you might not have have the the detail that I've got here but do you see that little washer there that was on the rod there that needs to be retained with this part and how it came off was the the points of that washer there's two points north and south there they were facing north and south when they when I took that off so it might be one of those occasions where you really need to take some notes about how that came apart um, and there's a little spring inside here as well which we're going to take out in a minute as well but that's the barrel part there and we'll continue now after I've labelled these up and, and put the the housing on the board um, we'll continue with the disassembly the next instruction is um, to remove this scrub screw on top of the gun here um, that's the barrel set screw located on top of front section of receiver so we're going to take that out now this grub screw and that really just sort of holds the barrel in place and I suspect it lines up with something on the barrel itself inside so we'll put that to one side that grub screw and label that up in a minute the next thing is to take this nut off here that holds the barrel into the receiver itself. Arguably this is the most difficult part of dismantling this Crossman. Uh, it's difficult to actually find something that will actually uh, unscrew this nut here because you can only see half of it. The, the, the other half is recessed into the gun itself. Um, I found the best way is to use a pair of pliers with some tape around the ends um, so that you don't disfigure this nut too much. It's, it's just a nailed nut. Nailed nut. It's, there's nothing really here, much here to grip but I have uh, loosened this up now um, and so I can unscrew it probably uh, with, with my hands. That's uh, my note. Let me 
use a pair of pliers again and see if I can unscrew it. So that wasn't easy at all. I had to um, squirt quite a bit of WD-40 into this region here to make sure that this nut was um, was able to move. Uh, it was quite tight in there. And then, as I said, I used some pliers with some tape on to grip the nut like that. And then I was able to use my hand to unscrew the barrel whilst I was actually gripping this nut here so I've actually loosened it considerably now so that's the barrel out and that's and that's the nut um, you'll see that obviously there is um, a dent or a hole rather in the barrel here and that must line up when we put the barrel back together that that hole there must line up with that hole there where the screw came out of initially that retains the barrel into a fixed position next job is to slide the hammer spring out of the out of its location here um, I'm just using my tool to pull that out. Now, on this spring, you'll notice that it's got an, an end to it, a pin end to it, if you like. That pin, when you put the spring back in, this pin must locate inside the hole that's inside. Now, that's quite important, and we'll come back to that when we put the gun back to, together again. So with that spring removed, we can now unscrew one of the nailed nuts from the cocking plunger, if you like. And this should now come out of the gun from the side. You will see in the spindle, yeah, if I can show you that on the camera, there's a hole there and that was the hole that the spring actually went through so if you've ever wondered why by unscrewing the one end of the knurled nut on the on the on the cocking lever why you can't actually remove the actual pin itself from the side of the gun the reason is because the spring is actually holding this pin in place so now that's completely removed So now with the cocking lever removed we can uh, slide out the, uh, remove the uh, hammer and the hammer sleeve from inside the gun. So these are two metal tubes or one's the hammer inside there and its sleeve, I'll just show you by putting those two pieces apart there. So one fits inside the other and of course the cocking lever that we've just pulled out from the side goes through that hole there so make sure whilst you've got that in your hands and you know which way it went in make sure you understand which way round that came out of the gun that's quite important mark that up and put it aside so the next step is to actually take the trigger guard off and there is a pin here that needs to be um, hammered out with a, a pin that I've got here, a pin tool here. It's a very, very small uh, cotter pin inside there that needs to be pushed out. Um, and the screw here and the trigger guard should then come off. So if I have the gun flat here and hopefully with this pin in place I can then tap the pin through to the other side it's just coming through let's just put it on top of something else to allow me to just hammer it all the way through okay so that's released one side 
of the trigger guard and actually the trigger has now decided to swing out and there's a spring there that's likely to fall out I don't know if you can see that there um, that's the trigger spring so I'll set that aside take this other screw out for the trigger guard and that should mean that the trigger guard comes out completely that's that's the trigger guard and its screw so we'll keep those two parts together the pin that I've just hammered through is in the body there I'll just leave that there it's not doing any any um, issue there so um, that's fine so we'll just leave that like that and hammer it back through when we put the gun back together okay so to take the the trigger and the sear the, the well the actual trigger and the sear are flopping about now held in by one pin here that also needs to be drafted out through um, with a with a, with a punch and hammer so I'm just going to take those out now well, that was easy that just dropped through really um, so that's those are the, show you those two parts together so that's the the sear and the trigger and the pin that held those two bits there I'll keep all those three parts together so to make sure that we've got those parts safe for our reassembly there uh, now we just need to take the valve out and to do that we need to remove two screws one either side of the body here so that one's come out and this holds the valve assembly inside okay so those two screws are out now I'll try and give you a shot from underneath uh, what it says next is that pry the valve from the frame using a large slotted screwdriver in the valve slot so down through here there's a slot in the valve and a position where you can place a screwdriver and then lever it against the body of the gun to actually prise it out so the actual valve is going to come out this direction towards where the, the barrel was basically um, so I'm going to do that now it's probably going to be a little bit stiff so I'm going to do that and then show you what the valve looks like when it's out okay so we got to the stage where we were ready to remove the valve from the actual casing itself the last stage really um, in this dismantle and now um, it's been another day since uh, since the last part I videoed and uh, needless to say I've had quite a bit of trouble trying to get the valve out um, I had to spray quite a lot of WD-40 in in there and let it soak overnight so uh, so as, as to try to loosen up the valve in there there's a lot of crud over the years that's that's built up I would guess and um, it's just made it so stiff to get out um, I have done another one of these previously and that was that was difficult but not as difficult as this one um, they are quite difficult to get out so um, two methods uh, I used um, as I said uh, earlier uh, you can insert um, a screwdriver in here on the valve where there's a ridge on the brass of the valve at the end there and what I did was um, I used some pliers or the handle of some pliers if I get my hands out of the way you'll see um, as a leverage so so I'm kind of extending out uh, from the gun so that I've got something to lever the screwdriver on to try to pull it and actually um, not only was I trying to pull it out this way but I was actually tapping it with a hammer as well to try to pull it and, and that kind of moved it a little bit but it didn't actually uh, entirely move it um, uh, completely out so um, 
I got to the stage where I thought, well, this hole here, um, where the actual valve can be seen through, it's a little bit further through now. Um, but I actually put something soft in there, some doweling, and I hammered the valve at an angle from this point here. Um, some sharp blows to the valve to, to, to try and move it, and that, that actually did it in the end, that, that, sh that shifted it through. So, but it actually took, took me quite a time to do that. And I actually went through a, a process of heating the gun up as well, which is something that's recommended on some of the websites as well to actually heat, heat the casing up to try to, um, well, I, I guess, get this, this crud that's built up over, over, the, over the years uh, to, to get it to loosen up so that you can actually prise it out. So with that in mind, the, I will now hopefully pull the valve out. Yeah, it just drops out now. So there's nothing else now down the gun. What we've got in our hands out here is the valve itself. So on the end here we have a spring which is kind of like attached to the back of the valve. Um, I need my small hammer here just to give it a tap back because I have had this out but um, this is the business end here this is where the actual hammer hits and then momentarily lets some of the uh, CO2 pass through now the only thing I'm going to replace on here really is is this o-ring that's around the middle here so I'm going to take that off in a minute and replace it with one of the new ones from the kit now if I take out the actual um, pin of the valve to show you we just use it this should come out quite easy but I'm just using a punch just to to do that now you want to make sure inside here that it's very very clean because um, this part here is making a seal inside um, inside the valve now some of you will find that the seal on the end of this pin here is um, is perished and is not probably uh, working correctly and is probably leaking leaking gas through and the only option that you might have here is to actually try and obtain a new one of these from the states now i will try to find a website for you that you can actually um, go to to order one of these from the states the seal that's on the end of this probe here is not replaceable really well it's it's difficult to replace um I've looked on various websites and I've found that some people manage to dig these out and replace the um, the area with some PTFE, a PTFE ring that's inserted into here. But um, I'm not going to do any of that on this valve because I think it's actually working fine at the moment. Um, but if yours leaks then you've probably got no choice but to dig this out and try and replace it with some material. Um, by all means, if anyone else knows any more information about what to do with these valves and uh, how to make them good, then please, in the description, please put some information in for people because um, I couldn't find really anyone uh, in this country that um, sold these valves. So we're a bit well, you might get a bit stuck here on on the spare part for this uh, i'm just going to dig this out this um, o-ring off the valve body itself like that and actually that's quite rough and perished i, I would guess it probably has never been replaced um i'm going to clean this valve up now um, make sure it's nice and, uh, and clean before I put the, the, the new one on. 
okay so that really does bring us to the end of this part of the uh, the video on the on the crossman mark ii dismantle um and the next part will be putting the gun back together again and i will follow that up shortly with that video to youtube um and just as an aside uh, there is in the actual um filler plug there is although we did replace the o-ring the seal um earlier in the video there is another o-ring right down down deep where the pin is that pierces the co2 um, uh, there's another o-ring down there and the way in which to dismantle this plug is to use some circlip pliers to take a circlip out inside there and uh, and then dismantle it that way well i'm not going to do that on this occasion um i actually don't think that o-ring down there um is leaking so and it's quite a difficult job to do that but uh that's a possibility for you guys if if, if that's what you need to do so that's the plug and we're going to leave that for this time now before we put anything back together again of course clean everything up um get all the horrible dirty grease off everything um, insert some oil and and make things clean and shiny ready for putting it all back together again and um, i'll be with you shortly with that follow-up video to show you how to put the whole gun back together again so thanks for watching and i'll be with you in the part two very very soon Well, if you've ever wondered where the name Newtown Naughty Boy comes from, well, you can learn a little bit more about that. Um, I did write a book last year, and uh, quite recently, I've had the book republished. Um, it's got a nice new cover on it. It details uh, my story, really, uh, growing up uh, in the UK in a small town, and uh, all the things that I got up to uh, during the 50s, 60s, and 70s. There's quite a bit in there, there's some pictures, there's illustrations, there's a little bit of naughtiness, there's quite a bit of air gun shooting and shenanigans. There's stuff that will make you laugh in this book. It's a book you can order from Amazon, but also it's available on Kindle quite cheaply. So why not give it a go? It's a really good read and then you can give me some feedback on it. Um, hope you enjoy. Give it a try.